Yeah. I want us to just continue in what we normally do. Uh, what we normally do on Thursdays we talk about wealth class we talk about wealth class uh, and uh, We, we take, we get perspective. Discipleship is not just in the area of being taught the word of God. Discipleship, they normally say, has to be holistic. And discipleship is simply about learning the truth of the word of God and uh, getting the perspective of God concerning everything. Paul says that uh, the reason as to why God provided the five-fold ministry in chapter 4 of the book of Ephesians, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive uh, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes every increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. In other words, he says, so that you mature in all things. And then so that. And then the, in verse 16 we are told. Uh, according to the effect of working in the measure of every part. Making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. In other words, every joint supplies something to the body. Every, body, every joint. In other words, every body that is in the, in, the, in the body of Christ. When they mature. They serve God, and when everybody serves, he said it's for the growth of the whole body of Christ. So we must have a very informed, informed decision when it comes to uh, everything in the Bible. Now, 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 now. Uh, we were looking at, we are talking about, we talked about Abraham, Isaac, and we looked, we are, we are looking at, and at looking at uh, Jacob last week. We looked at chapter 28, the whole book, the whole chapter of 28 of Genesis, and we saw how uh, God. Uh, landed on Jacob and Jacob was to, to, to continue what Abraham began uh, Isaac took it from Abraham and Isaac is handing over to Jacob and we saw how God began with him in chapter 28 uh, we saw how uh, he intentionally is this intentional? Yes, or you know, sometimes you might live right, not knowing, not because of anything, just because you want to live right, and then you happen to be God's choice. 
there are those who after they understand their call or why God called them, they separate themselves from things that are not expected. But there are those who have been just living and many ministers who have done a lot all their lives, all ministers, be it the current ones that are serving and are having big impacts in people's life, and them that went before us. Many of them didn't plan to become preachers. But when they chose to keep themselves from evil, God chose them. And they became a very powerful, mighty vessels of God on earth, bringing the whole generation back to him. So Jacob is one man who also I think God saw him while he was in the mother's womb. Not even in, mother's, in his mother's womb because God knew him before he was even there. Jacob is somebody who, uh, through his marriage, he was not uh, a kind of man like Esau. Esau is moved so much by his stomach and what he's seen. Uh, when your stomach is controlling you, God cannot help you. That's why one of the things that we are to do is fasting so that you learn how to tame your appetite. So he couldn't tame his appetite and God chose even when, you, it, when, you, when it came to marriage uh, Esau just married he just saw the ladies walking around and just brought them home. Them that are not them that worship other gods he tithes. So he disqualified himself for the work of God. He disqualified himself for God's work by living a life that does not impress God. And that's why last week I was saying, your marriage matters to God. Who you marry. Who you marry can determine whether God can use you in your generation or not. Now, that does not mean that if you made a mistake before, uh, God will hate you forever. <laughs> it's not. If you made a mistake before, God can correct, you can correct your ways, and then God can uh, shape your life once more, and then you can be usable of God. So, uh, I'm, I'm always, I'm, 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 you know, we need to give some perspective to the world we are talking about. Because it has looked like the church is characterized by lots of poverty. Eh? Lots of poverty so that anybody who is a minister is seen as a, as, a, as a poor person who does not even know what... In fact, people have mercy on somebody who becomes a pastor or... Uh, it is wrong. The perspective has been wrong. And uh, that's why many people, and many of the people I was talking about who God called them, they didn't plan to become pastors. Many, even in Kenya, who are like one example is Pastor Lai. Pastor Lai never taught to become a pastor. He's a banker, even refused. Why do God chase after those ones who are not even thinking about being a pastor? <laughs> and he's not aware of them that went to Bible college. Why is it? The qualification is in how somebody has organized his life to please God by the way they live. If the way you live pleases God, you can easily influence others. And if your ways has pleased God and he has chosen you, you'll be exemplary in every area, even in finances and everything. Ministers of the gospel have to be people who do what the Bible says. They should be leading. They should be exemplary in all aspect, in prayer, in giving, in discipleship, in every aspect. I'm talking about the ministers. 
That is the life of Joseph, not Joseph. Who is, this guy is Jacob. And uh, when, Abra, when Isaac laid his hand on him, the laying of hand is still in the New Testament, the anointing fell on him. And from that moment henceforth, God's eye, or God's eyes were on Jacob. Everywhere he goes, God was with him. When his lips, he sees open heaven. Angels coming down, going up. He lives there, he goes to Laban's place. Laban mistreats him. Even in whatever Laban does, in whatever he does, Laban was telling his, I went to read that part. When, when he made him so rich, he, he, told, he told Laban, I want to go home. I've served you over 20 years. I have two wives and kids. I have nothing. <laughs> I worked for you without anything. I like, let me just go home. The Laban told him, if you only knew that even what I have multiplied when you came, anointing. But uh, this man told him, I'm, now, I'm, not, I'm not ready for it now. I'm not ready for it. I'm not going to stay here. I want to go. He says, tell me, I'm going to pay you some salary. He says, I am not the type that can be paid salary. He says, no. If I have multiplied all your animals and they are in millions, so you want to give me 10,000 and I'm bringing you the millions. That's what employees do, employers do. They use your skills to generate millions and then they tell, give you 1% of the amount that you are. <laughs> he said, no, you cannot do that. I think we are going to go into that. Because ultimately you realize that uh, the man became so rich. The anointing can make you rich. I'm saying the anointing can make you rich. Let me read for you, for you some verses and then I go into into this man. Uh, one of the things that this man called is called who? David. David was anointed and Eli uh, and Saul was rejected by God. And uh, he came somewhere and he was asking some question. He was, when he saw how Goliath was really mistreating Israelites, so he asked a question. I want us to read. Verse 23, chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. I want to show you anointing can avail riches. Verse 23, 1 Samuel 17. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spoke according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. Verse 25, And men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spoke to the men that stood by saying, What shall be done to the man that kills the Phil this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is that? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I'm asking a question. Did he not hear in the first place? <laughs> I think he didn't believe his ears. Verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up surely to defy Israel? Is he come up? And it shall be that the man 
who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Now the challenge of marrying the king's daughter who is not a believer. <laughs> May God help young men. Amen. When you are told you're going to marry king's daughter, it looks like uh, it is uh, something good. <laughs> but if she is not a believer, she was a snare. Saul was giving her to trap David so that he will kill him. Although God protected his life. So what I'm trying to show you there is the anointing can avail great riches. Because the next thing you hear, David says, uh, they repeated the same thing. Verse 27 says, And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the, ki the man that kills him. In other words, they are referring him to in verse 25. What did David say? Uh, I want you to look at uh, verse 30. And he turned from his him towards another and spoke after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. Hmm? The same thing he was told. And when the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Hmm? You know he has heard the rewards. Now he has more energy. The first energy, the first thing you've taught is how can this man defy God's children? How can he insult? But the second energy he got is the reward. He's going to be given great Riches. Have you seen his yes three times? Hmm? I want you to, want me to show you. Verse 26. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that kills the Philistine, this Philistine, and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him, after this manner. Hmm? He was told in verse 25. He's asking in verse 26. And then the other verse, is still in verse 20, 27, 20, not 27, which one did I read? Uh, verse 30. He's still asking the same question. And they're answering. What was catching his attention? In fact, he's no longer even thinking about reward <laughs> uh, the parable of a treasure. What par is it a parable of peel or what is it called? Somebody found something precious. A treasure in the field. When he saw it, he went to ask the guy to come. Can I buy from you this land? And then he he's buying the land, not because he wants land, because he has sown some. He saw some some treasure in the land. It seems like that. And David said to Saul, verse thirty-two: Let no man's heart fade because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine, to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard 
and smote him and slew him. Now, what do you think Saul is? How do you think Saul is responding? You catch a lion, tear him apart, and take the sheep from him? Ah! Anointing can do anything. Anointed men are protected men. God is on their side. Nothing. The living or the non-living cannot. You know, the, something good about anointing is when threatening environment arrives, the anointing arises upon you. Some of us have finished reading the book of Judges. You read about uh, Samson. Lion appeared from nowhere. And the man teared lion like karatasi. <laughs> the anointing came upon him. Thousands of Philistines surrounded him to want to finish him. He just looked around and he saw a jaw of a, a donkey. The guy took it and the Bible says he slew 1,000 men. Now that one you have to have supernatural understanding. <laughs> How can you throw just one thing and 1,000 people die? That tells you that the angels we studied in, you remember what we studied about angels? If you didn't study that, go and study about angels in Spirit World Conference. We are told one angel is is bigger than any tall building in the world. One angel. Any big building in the world, this one is small. We don't have big buildings, even in Kenya. Hmm. One of the legs is on, on the sea. The other leg is on the dry ground. So how big is this thing? That is the angel that takes charge of us. So the truth of the matter is, when the anointed man is is provoked, the angels move to action. And those are the ones that will do whatever now we hear. It's not about what he did. This man has serious security. Nobody can come around. Even today, the same anointing is on us. God protects us the same way. When David is standing before Goliath, if, he says, if Goliath, God has delivered me from lion and bear, he says, even this other one will just be like him, <laughs> like them. That's what he said. In other words, there is no... Now, this is why being conscious of the presence of God is always important. We are not mere human beings. <laughs> I repeat this. We are not mere human beings. No. We are not ordinary men. The Bible says you are gods. <laughs> Why? Ministering spirits. In chapter number 20 of Second Chronicles. <laughs> uh, Second Chronicles 20. Different tribes, Ammonites, Moabites, another tribe. So many of them came against Judah. And Jehoshaphat was told, they are coming to fight you. And he introduced first and he told God, you know, we are so few, there are so many, we cannot do anything by ourselves. And uh, the prophet was called to tell them what will happen. And the man said, where are the present worship? <laughs> Let them begin some worship. When they began worshiping, those different tribes that came to fight Judah, they fought each other, they killed other, each other, and they left. They, so many of them died. Here people are just singing. They didn't go for anything. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is this. Protection. Even when he's going to face Goliath, it doesn't matter how big Goliath is. In fact, the angels that are surrounding Joseph, David, are bigger than Goliath. Huh? Might be they were helping him to throw that stone. Uh, when he was throwing, they were helping him so that when, they, when he's releasing, ata, nikama tu kushika, so tunatupa pamoja, 
and the thing enters inside big head kichwa kubwa yenu tano yenye imekuwa combined that is the head of of goliath hmm? five heads combined like if all your heads are combined na hii yako kidogo hata tukipiga na mawe yaingi that big one the anointing is behind it when the guy hit him down riches came what i'm trying to say is this i think it's good to speak some of these things because you know there's a way we live like ordinary people and you 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 belittle yourself unajidunisha unajiona si wewe si kitu ah ah wewe ni zaidi ya mwanadamu you are more than a human being eh okay? there is god who is standing behind you there is god who is behind standing behind you there is god who takes care of you so when the anointing comes on you it attracts riches to you but before that god wants you to be established in the truth that's what he was doing to you, to, to to jacob jacob has to realign his life and make his life look like what god wants to see and the truth is in chapter 28 we saw he said i am ready why is it that every time god is appearing to joseph jacob anything jacob touches prospers jacob has had anointing now today the anointing we carry is bigger than the one that the old testament people carried a, a new creation is bigger than abraham now this is i don't know if i can mess you up now. a new creation is bigger than jacob bigger than solomon bigger than hmm, samson big a new creation The Holy Spirit was staying on them. Today the Holy Spirit lives in you. For them the Holy Spirit comes on them only when they are to do something. When they are threatened, look at all of them. The Holy Spirit comes. Laban tried to to come to Jacob and trying to tell him, hmm, "How are you going to live like this?" God told him, "Don't touch him." <laughs> God told him, "Don't touch my anointed one." So what I'm trying to say is this this poverty that is in the church is because of lack of anointing and I've spoken about two kind of anointing here anointing within and anointing upon you can get it on our youtube I preached two years ago <laughs> anointing the anointing that brings wealth is anointing upon not within anointing within is the one that will grow you spiritually first john chapter 2 verse 20 and verse 27 that's anointing within the anointing upon let me read it first john 2:20 but you have an unction from the holy one and you know all things verse 27 but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you and you need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it has taught you you shall abide in him so anointing within is for building you is to inform you to teach you about to reveal to you about god but there's another anointing acts chapter number 1 verse 8 The Bible says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. 
That assignment includes flight. Amen. <laughs> if there is something called flight, you're leaving Jerusalem until the end of the earth. You must have climbed planes, aeroplanes. Amen. So, ukitoka Jerusalem, wende dunia yote mzima, utenda na gari. That tells, you, that tells you that there is enough wealth or resources supplied for the assignment that has been given to, to you. Anointing upon is for assignment. If God has sent you to go and do something, anointing within is what helps you to be built up. The anointing within will prepare you for the anointing upon, the work that is ahead. And when God has called you and he has sent you, he will make sure that whatever you need is available. Chapter 16 of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 16. I want you to see something here. Uh... The Bible says in verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of God, of the Lord, came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the, the Lord troubled him. Now from that moment, Saul became poor. From the moment the, the spirit upon left. What I read to you, eh? in First Samuel chapter 17, where he was told, the king will give you great riches. Which king is that? You think it is... For them, they know Saul. And Saul was no longer a king as far as God is concerned. That wealth and riches has now been transferred to who? To David. Why do you have to be troubled by somebody who is very young? The name is who? David, 17 years old, and you are a king of over 30 years, almost 40 years or beyond. Why do you be, why, why did he lack sleep? David has already picked the riches that belonged to him. He's more famous than Saul. And when you become famous, even on YouTube and uh, Facebook, you begin earning money. Every a thousand bob, I'm told, is then hundred shillings on YouTube. If you get a thousand view, that is hundred bob. Ten thousand is a thousand view, hundred bob. <laughs> so you're famous. Anything you put there, look at the the look at who is selling like Coca Cola. Somebody said. <laughs> Somebody said Nelson Mandela is more famous than Coca-Cola when he was alive. Eh? Look at it. Who is so famous in Kenya? Ruto and Baba. After one hour of releasing a video about them, how much? How many views do you see? Several thousands. And that is for those ones who are releasing those videos. They are making money. And Citizen TV and these other TVs have known how to make more money. They cut short all news. <laughs> so that every, every, every two minutes or three minutes news about something is earning them money. So when they are sitting there, how much money are they making? <laughs> and you are watching and <laughs> David became so famous. So where do you think money was going now?
it, it, it surprises me how somebody can be called a servant of God and poverty is everywhere. Poverty arrived in the house of Saul when Samuel anointed David. The Holy Spirit came upon David and uh, what entered Paul, Saul? <laughs> Devil. So, so he now realizes that he has nothing. And someone who is very young has everything. Hmm? What we read in chapter 28 of the book of Genesis is how Samuel has, no, Jacob has realigned his life and the anointing that was released in chapter 27 by his father Isaac has begun already functioning because now God is where Jacob is. Everywhere go, Jacob God goes, God goes. Anointing up. Even today, even today in the New Testament, there are people that have been anointing for some specific work, anointed for specific work, a specific work. And whatever they need will follow them wherever they go. You don't need to struggle if God sent you. Somebody will just wake from somewhere and is disturbed. Send that person money. And you will send without questioning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there are people God will give the burden. They don't have sleep until they pay. <laughs> then he's falling. <laughs> then he sent me my fees when he didn't even talk to me when I began class. When I was beginning the first class, I just met him in December and uh, 2020. Uh, I finished in at class in Nairobi, and I went to, on Feb in February. I went to Nairobi to begin the, uh, the school of discipleship. No, school of ministry. And then I told one of my friends called Pastor Simba, I think you talked to him. On Monday I told him, my fee comes when I am seated here. And uh, now, did you hear what I told him? You didn't hear. So Dennis from, Meru, from Moyale sends 5K because I need a six, every month I pay 6,000. Mary, uh, this guy sends 5,000 on Tuesday. I've never spoken to him, I only saw him once. 5,000. Then I call him, he doesn't pick. The following day, he adds 1K. And then he, he receives my call. <laughs> because, because it's like Amen. And uh, and he did not uh, he did not Mama Feva, please come to speak to somebody here. As I finish, what I'm saying is this uh, God So what I'm saying is this uh Stories, yes, yeah, I to but but it might be to, to continue to finish for you that story. That six thousand he sent opened the door for him in less than three weeks, and he got a job that earns over hundred k. And then he says, "Now I am sponsoring you throughout. So if you want to know who was paying my fee, and am I going to Nairobi and coming back?" 14,400 every month until today. You also told her to pay for diploma. I don't know. I have already got the money. Amen. God can use anybody. He looked for a job for so many years he couldn't find. When he sent money, something happened to him. And it's still happening to him. I'm saying it's still happening to You cannot lack That's what I'm saying. God can raise anybody. When God anoints a man, it is for the benefit of people 
who are listening. And any money you send there will come back multiplied. Pastor Lai says, he never does any project looking money from outside. He tells people, give. And in this church, people give every day. For those of you, when we went to, together to what explosion, you know. How many times were you giving Jamila in a day? Did you give all, <laughs> all, this, all the five times in a day and you have seven days there? <laughs> every preaching that the word of God has come to you, an offering has to be given. But as we don't know, as we think that <laughs> when you're giving, you're losing. And the more you think you're losing, indeed you're losing. <laughs> because the problem is you give by faith. And as you give, what, what will God do? Is the same God of the Bible we are worshipping today. That Elijah told a woman who had only the last meal they eat and die. He said, prepare that meal for me, forget about yourself. Muzea nakuja naungia hivyo na mama na mtoto. Si munasema hivyo. Si muzea ngefa kupiana chakula. But who is, who is talking? If you look at the man who was talking, the man who was talking is not an ordinary man. He's a man who, on whom the power of God say, uh, stays in that generation. In every generation, there is a man that the power of God stays on. At their words, everything happens for people in that environment. That's why in, from Genesis to Revelation, there are those who have been specifically anointed to touch generations and reach thousands of souls. Whenever they stand up and do something, thousands are benefiting. That is a kind of man, Joseph, sorry, Jacob was. He realigned his life well with God. Anointing brings riches. Anointing opens doors that you never thought that is available. People are looking for jobs. And some people are earning five salary. <laughs> in one organization. <laughs> people know. <laughs> five salaries. Mwaka unashangia mungu wa menisa au. Na mjamaa na ungeze watu. Tuta ungeze kuna programming ini mekuja. Utapata hii kwa hii program. Na programming ini. Wewe tu unapewa. Na mungine ana chochote. Hey. Anointing. Anyone anointed of God in the scriptures. We are going to see that. That's why I, you need to have totally different perspective. That's what we teach here. That's what we teach here. That's why I'm not embarrassed. Or I don't feel like I am eating your money. <laughs> when we are asking for offering, even today we are going to give. Every morning we give, evening we give. Every time you are giving, something is opening up in the spirit world. Opportunity that this world has never seen. God will provide you a job that no one is aware. A job that has your name on it because of what you did. I think this guy, when I tell him to give testimony, you need to tell us exactly what happened. He need to tell us. And he's still giving. He gave me the two years. He's been giving that money. Has he lacked anything? When, when we give, what happens? Huh? When we give to anointing, what, what happens? When you give to a, a work that God began, what happens? There is no day, all the days of your life, as long as you are tapping in the same anointing, Pastor, I always say, even if you've left the school of ministry, continue connecting, continue sending. That's the secret. Continue sending support for the work that is happening. As money is being sent to the anointed, God opens doors that nobody is aware. Eyes have never seen, ears have never heard, the heart of man has not conceived what God has stored for them that love him. People are saying no job. The best thing to do is sow seed. Give. 
and you will never lack all the days of your amen this year we are going to access more money than last year on our on our expense monthly expense we have built on and we have juma amen on our radio program and all these god will meet all these needs according to his riches in glory i'm not shocked at when these people are adding more value to this work god also will make more money to come to us he will supply amen i'm saying he will supply so what i was trying to say today what i'm as i conclude what i'm saying is anointing takes you to great wealth anointing takes you to do what to great wealth anointing don't look at a man of god as if although it's also good to 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 to, to prove whether they are called because that is another cha another challenge and i must say this because i was asking in class this question people are flocking in here and they're being told not to go to that church and they see something and they rush there huh? and then i was told every every minister of jcc when they began in the city people ran to them and other pastors that those who are called by god and the second one are those who are called by men oh naka pastor situkutume bible college so na tuma na unakuja unasafa kwa church and then the third one is monyali i have a call now that these three men are serving and you don't know how to, to identify what <laughs> you might suffer and that the two the first two who are not called by god listen i am laughing but i am serious if somebody is called by god every problem that people present to him will find a solution right there because heaven is upon him if a man is not called god is not the anointing is not on him he will try to do whatever <laughs> you will you bring problems to him he will look for the way of dodging that problem and he give you an explanation that is unbiblical I'm serious. You will sit there. Kwato kwa kina faiz. Siku moja Mungu ananiponya. Unaka miaka 10 huko na ugonjwa. Unatafuta kazi miaka ngapi hujapata and you're going to church. And you're like God what is happening? That's why there's so much poverty in the church because the anointing is not there. no doors opening for people in the last one year i was watching in this church promotions from one person to another at the place of a promotion tumesikia tu unajua ni increaseiwa pay unajua that's what you should be hearing not crying that pastor kuna kitu ya kukula no if indeed god is on this church Something must happen in people's pocket. Amen. And anybody who has supported this work, I think one of these we might need to 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 ask some of the testimonies. All of them, I don't care who, people who have sacrificially stood with this ministry. There will only be increase in their finances. They will never go down. And I've I've tested the last four years, I've seen it. I'm trying to say this. Where there is no anointing there is enough poverty even if it is a, a building called church. I'm serious. That's why when you look at a pastor somebody feels like if somebody becomes a pastor unaanza kurumia. Huh? The truth of the matter is nobody is richer than a pastor. I'm only beginning please. You'll see me fly with my jet. 
Uh, you see me go with my vehicles around. You will see. I'm not joking. I mean, you nyumba munaona hiyo ni ya rental tu hiyo si yetu. Yetu ni jenga wale wana current. When wakati hii kazi itapanuka, we are going to be in the best estate in Marsabit County. Not in a very they call self confused house. <laughs> no. And God will test us as we begin. Are we is this ministry adding any value to people that are coming? It brings one if they are changing. It brings two. It brings 10. It brings 100. 1000. That's why this, this field is too small for the ministry that we want to establish. At least we need 20 acres. Amen. At least thousands of people have to flock. But God will wait and see whether we are faithful in the little that he gave. And all men of God began being faithful on what they have been given. If you are told go and preach and your preaching as is changing life, how consistent is the work that God has called you to do? How much are you sacrificing for it to happen? As you stay faithful, more will be added. And God builds the wealth of the righteous progressively. Not pap and a quatilla billion. Utaka confused. Utaka confused. Utaka nata yesu. Kuna members that up and down. Waki mi ona million moja oni kanisa. Sa ona tembea na kifua. And I always say in this class, before money lands on you, please make sure you have grown spiritually. Otherwise, you are going to look at me like you are my boss and my sponsor. But the opposite is true. I am your boss. <laughs> I'm serious. And I'm very serious. And I don't fear your money. Because mine is bigger than yours. I'm here to make everybody rich. Anybody that sits under this roof. I don't care how poor you are right now. <laughs> I am serious. I don't care whether you are every hole is is has some hole, every pocket has some holes. It doesn't hold money. Jo kuna account ya watu wengine ya bank haika ina pesa. Andi kama ikona hold. Pesa ikiisha, shote imeisha. But the more you sit and construct kingdom mindset concerning the work of God. It's not about really us being wealthy. It's about the kingdom of God expanding. And if you have at heart the expansion of the kingdom of God, the wealth will come. I don't know why always I, I finish at this point saying that anything put in your hand, can I say a statement that might surprise some of us here? At least over 30% of the money you get must progress the gospel. Not 10%. 10% is the least that people should give in the church. And sometimes when you give 10%, you think that you are given too much and God is laughing in heaven. <laughs> God will laugh when you give everything you have. Get salary of 50K and give all of it. He will laugh and bring more. I'm saying at least, out of the money you are getting, something should be happening by that money, progressing the kingdom of God. As long as you are putting in the kingdom of God and it is expanding, heaven will continue releasing. But when you are giving 1% of 100%, no longer, no wonder you are struggling. Why? Because Amen. Lord, we are saying thank you for your word. A new breed of people that you want to raise in this city. Them that live by your word. 
them that do what your word says. Even in the era of wealth, I don't believe in poverty. We have looked at all through the Bible. We have seen men that have been very consistent and stable, waiting on you in prayer, fasting, doing your work. They never became poor. And that will never be our portion, that poverty in Jesus' name. We will choose to build ourselves in the ministry, in the work that you have called us. We choose to build our perspective on these men that you have raised in the world. And we are going to demonstrate that wealth in this city as we expand your kingdom everywhere we go. We honor you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to give as we finish our service.